It's time for Halfway Full. On today's episode, Associate Counseling Psychologist Camille Campbell talks us through teen depression, how it often goes unrecognized, and ways in which we can help to improve the well-being of our children and teens. Halfway Full starts now. Welcome to Halfway Full. You know, issues such as peer pressure, academic expectations, changing bodies can bring a lot of ups and downs for teens. But for some teens, the lows are more than just temporary feelings. They're a symptom of depression. And so I have with me Camille Campbell. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what I feel is something we don't talk about enough, Camille. And that's depression in teens. Thank you so much for joining me on Halfway Full. And thank you for having me. All right. So, I mean, I mentioned some of them off the top of the bat. But, but, but what are some of the causes of depression in teens? Okay, so the causes of depression in teens varies a lot. Mm. So um, we're looking at from the home environment, high expectations from parents and also high expectations of themselves, mm-hmm. right? And in addition to that, um, there can be neglect within the home. Um, not being able to express themselves freely is actually one of the things I've seen. So you'll normally hear, um, they don't understand, Mm -hmm. right? And so they don't get that opportunity to express themselves. Um, Also, as it relates to the high expectations, um, growing up as a child, um, you're accustomed to parents helping you out a lot mm-hmm. um, based on the fact that, okay, maybe from their background, um, they're now overcompensating because they don't want their children to be doing the same thing that they have been doing. Mm. And so when that child transitions from the child stage to the teenage years, they're expected to be jump, you know, to jump into mm-hmm. and to be responsible and take on the chores. And the, the, <laughs> the reality is that they don't know how to make that transition, mm-hmm. right? And so then when they are defiant, it kind of throws them into a depressive state because they're really not accustomed to doing that, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So when we also look at the school environment, um, there are a lot of bullying now from my experience going on in the school system. But what I also find is that whilst we were more resilient and had more coping strategies based on our own experience, I realized that teenagers now really don't have that level of coping mechanism, right? So they are, when it comes down to criticism, they take it very hard, right? And even as much as a hairstyle, a friend says, I don't like your hairstyle, can send them into a depression. And in addition to that, they compare themselves with their peers, Mm -hmm. um, physically, how they look. Um, They're not as pretty as Jane, and they don't look as curvy as Jane. Mm -hmm. Worse if somebody tells them, oh, you're flat. It goes into deep depression because they they don't know how to handle the criticism, mm-hmm. right? In addition to that, if they're in a competitive school, um, that you know facility that has high grades, students performing well, and they're not able to keep up, um, they, that also they feel like uh, underachievers. Underachievers because they're not um, getting the grades mm-hmm. as their peers are getting, mm-hmm. and they compare themselves. And in addition to that, what I also realized, I don't know if you have that daily, but when I was going to school, I never had so many activities after school. Oh. <laughs> right? Oh. And so now you find that there are so many different activities after school. And the, 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 the issues now with balancing the school, maintaining the grades, and also being so active in all of these activities. When you ask a child, I mean, what do you do after school? Mm. They have something doing after school Monday. Mm. They have an activity after school Tuesday. If it's not swimming Monday, it's kickboxing Wednesday, mm-hmm. and Tuesday is chess, yeah. and, when, and the activities go on and on. Yeah. Right? I used I use I used to do some of them and, and I don't think I balance them as well either. Right. I don't think I balance them as well either. Because you're you're in, you're caught between also the love the love of, of that. Yes. Versus the academics. So yeah, you can do mm-hmm. the academics, but I really, really love this. This is fun. Yes. And so and it splits it, you know. Mm-hmm. By the time you go home you're tired, you're not looking at the homework. Exactly. So that so that is an issue. That is an issue because the resilience is not there. Yeah. Not being able to balance, they become overwhelmed because there's not enough coping mechanism to mm-hmm. maintain all of those activities. Yeah. Do you think a lot a lot of what is I guess escalating the teen depression is social media? Because when I hear you, you talking in terms of how we have come to an, an understanding of what we should look like physically, and it's like we have, we have a meeting, 
and everybody mm-hmm. say yes that's what look good yes and there's no diversity anymore and oh that look you look beautiful the way you are you're beautiful the way you are no it's so so there there are standards that have been set yes. for our young people that they just cannot meet cannot meet right yeah. so social media really does play um i can remember from experience um deep depression i have a young lady and her depression is really coming from social media yeah. covid did a number mm. so yeah, they spend a whole lot of time on the social media and this was where their communication the yeah. communication happens and somebody might says in the group chat mm-hmm. um you know make a criticism mm. and i mean they say some really mean things too like you know you shouldn't burn or yes just jump off yes. things like those and if you have a low self-esteem touching another personality mm. and someone who's you know mostly pessimistic um you are not going to handle that well so you're not going to internalize all of that camille oh, you touch something that I, I i said to somebody the other day when when some young people, and it's not all of them, you know, right. we're not generalizing, mm-hmm. but when some of them go, they go for the jugular. Yes, they go for the jugular. It's this, it's this, it's this anger yes. that if it's not played out in the way we see it mm-hmm. in the violence in the schools where they're mm-hmm. fighting, it's it's the words yes. and what they will, t- and, and a lot of it is social media. Yes, because I find that that when you say these things on social media. People comment on him, hey, yes, mm-hmm. and you have to see I'm done, our mm-hmm. it's celebrated, yes, and so they feel like so, so. I feel like we have to create a lens of the world that is not tainted by social media for mm-hmm. our children because what they, what they think is the world is not the world. How do I then, as a parent, because as a teenager, I mean, hormones and other things will come into play right and 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 emotions and feelings will vary but how do i now say no this is not just a passing feeling this is consistent this is depression Mm -hmm. what are some of the signs or symptoms that i should look for okay so you're going to see the behavior changes um sleeping all day Mm -hmm. so you'll find a teen locked in the room sleeping all day or not sleeping at all up at night on the tablets or the phone, listening to YouTube videos, listening mm-hmm. to music. So you'll see a change in the sleep habit. You'll see a, a change in the, the eating pattern because mm-hmm. sometimes they don't eat any at all until the parent comes and says, no, let's eat something. So they don't eat any at all. So they're changing the sleep pattern, the eating pattern. Um, they're selective um, social isolation. There are times when they might have a best friend, so they'll talk to that best friend. But in a lot of cases, they are isolated from the family. Mm-hmm. So they don't go out any at all out of the room, except probably to get, go get something to eat. Mm-hmm. Right? So when you see your teen not coming out as they used to, being more sensitive to criticism than the norm. So what never normally used to be an issue is now an issue. Mm-hmm. They become irritable, angry, and sad most days right mm. and the sad most days remember now we're going to look at sad as because we do get sad we do have our mood swings yeah. right but when the sadness and the mood swing continues or is persistent for more than two weeks mm-hmm. then you know that okay your child is now in depression yeah so look for that look for the sadness sometimes the crying bouts right. of crying um lots of pleasure in activities that they right. normally would have yes um not eat and, and you see all the things that you're saying to me are things that I, I see people identifying teenagers what them say that's a regular teenager them as a go through what I'm going through, but it really is not. The thing though, what I get is that the observation is really not there because yeah. whilst, okay, a teen, as you know, a teen, no, normally when you're teenagers, you're now more drawn to your peers and you yeah. may think, oh, this is normal. But what you're not realizing that there's a change because although this teen is um, drawn to their peers, mm-hmm. which is normal for a teenager, mm-hmm. what you realize is that there's really no interaction with the family at any at all. all. Mm-hmm right mm-hmm. and they'll snap at the the siblings or become irritable at the the parents mm. so the, there's a change yeah yeah it's just to observe that there is a change there is a change and it's just and, and don't just brush it off right as a normal everyday change a normal, everyday, normal change. everyday behavior um low self-esteem mm-hmm. is one of the things but but it, i don't know help me to identify that in a teenager okay so when they're critical of themselves um, they can be hard on themselves. Um, they, do, they don't handle criticism very well. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter how simple the criticism is. Okay, um, you might change your hairstyle. They internalize that. Mm-hmm. So they are very sensitive, mm-hmm. right? Um, you do a nice hairstyle, it looks good, and they go to school, and 
one friend, I remember I asked a child, how much person said them don't like it? Two. And I'm like, this is two? You sure this is two? Yeah. He said, yes, two. And I'm like, okay, so two persons out of the entire school, school don't like it. Don't like it. Yeah. And this impacts a child so much that it puts her into depression and she don't want to go to school. Mm. Mm. So we're looking for emotional changes and we're looking for behavioral changes um, as well. Right. Um, there's a lot of aggression in our schools. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that one of because people get aggressive and them just say, you're getting more trouble. The picnic and uh, but it might be a, might be a sign of something else. Yes, that can be a sign of so many different things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's also a sign of depression. Yeah. Right. Not being able to manage the emotions well. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they become sensitive, and when they become sensitive, two things happen: is that you become withdrawn, or you become aggressive. Mm -hmm. Poor school performance is also mm -hmm. um, a sign of depression too. You know, and right. I think sometimes when the grades dip. Um, we automatically jump to you're not focused. What is wrong with you? You're not you're not studying mm -hmm. hard enough. You're not. But 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 depression can affect a child's grades. It does because um, they are not able to concentrate or to focus, and they are not able to because the energy drained. They are now fatigued. They mm -hmm. don't have that motivation to really do anything, including schoolwork, mm -hmm. and so less attention is paid sometimes they can't even get themselves out of bed in the morning so they don't want to go to school they are not able to do any if they make it to school when they come home they just want to go sleep yeah right yeah. so not much effort is placed into the school where the truth is they're not able to mm -hmm. because they don't have the energy to mm -hmm. i think that's what you're saying right now that is the most important thing because when you you are on a child and punishing a child and saying focus you're not focusing on your schoolwork mm -hmm. you're not putting enough and work in they can't if they're depressed they can't they can't and that is what i've always said you know to some parents um we you tell them now work no, they, they can't. can't it's not the child is the situation that the child is going through yeah. and just she just the child just cannot the yeah. ability is not there to do it yeah yeah Wow, this is a lot. Self-harm mm. is, is an extremity. Self-harm is really an extremity, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, but it happens. It's per very prevalent. I hope I'm not releasing too much, but it's very prevalent. No, we have to say, right? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, Camila, I was really, really, really happy that you agreed to come to speak on this specifically because we talk about depression in society a lot, but it's so much focus on the adults yeah. that I think we don't give the young people a chance mm -hmm. to even appreciate that they're going through something. Right. Um, and if we don't understand what they're going through, we can't help them. And self-harm, um, I've seen like an, a, an escalation of it. You, you know the worst thing? Yeah. When the parents find out that this is happening, sometimes what it comes with is judgment. Mm. Why are you doing this? Mm. Why are you doing this? I mean, roof, you have a roof over your head. You're getting um, money. You're, you're being fed. You get everything you want. Mm -hmm. So it now becomes personal. It's me. Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm not doing? Mm -hmm. And so it takes the attention from the child. The child is going through something. Mm -hmm. Right? This morning Trying I was... Trying to make me look bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to a um, video this morning and I realized that. So basically, you know, it's normally the emotional side, not being able to handle the emotion. So they cut in order to feel the physical... The, the, the physical pain mm -hmm. because they are not able to deal with the emotional pain mm -hmm. so once something happens the thing is you know okay they're in the depression yeah and you have the parents over there shouting you need to go wash up the plate you need to go do this you need to go do that there's really not much time for them to really even process their emotions properly mm -hmm. right and so that alone is a trigger in itself let's send them to yeah. the court yeah how do we help them how do we respond to depression in teens um i've met teenagers who have said we're going through this but we feel like there's no one we can talk to because i mean what you just said anecdotally is something that happens a lot in homes they go to parents they feel bad to tell the parent because mm -hmm. they think my mom is a great person mm -hmm. my dad is a great person they provide food for me i have a roof over my head how do i now go and tell them that i'm depressed because it's almost like i'm letting them down if i say i'm depressed um, mm -hmm. or, it's, or if I go, they're going to run me. If I tell somebody, they're going to say, my head not good. How, how do we respond to teens? Okay, to so the first thing is to notice that there are changes. Yeah. Right? And, I mean, try and have this conversation. 
with the child um find out what's happening but in doing so also be prepared be prepared to listen yeah right and not listen to respond or listen to defend but listen to understand empathize right i mean understand where your child is at mm -hmm. and what your child is going through at this point they don't need a lecture mm -hmm. they need their feelings to be validated mm -hmm. right and so be prepared to listen one create a greater a stronger bond because a lot of times and the truth is sometimes i can't blame the parents because they are bills to pay so you find that most times it's really spent outside of the home mm -hmm. and i'm working by the time you come home you just want to oh, no, you get on the time. i don't want to deal with that we just want to go into my room mm -hmm. go sleep mm -hmm. right and i say to parents i understand you want to relax you want to but guess what pull the child into it no I mean, while you're soaking your foot in your so we look at Epsom salt, she have, or him have a pan over there that's soaking foot too. While you're watching to something that you're, he's watching, or both of you can watch something, you choose what you watch. So he gets a chance or she gets a chance to choose and you both enjoy watching. Mm -hmm. Then you get, so you share the relaxation. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't feel that like you're, uh, like you're it's a role. Your own life and yeah. You're for them own life. Right. Yeah. So I mean, find time to relax, but also include the child in the relaxation. So you're building a bond. You know, it's good to create a, a parent-child day or time. It doesn't have to be long. You know, if it's even half hour out of the week, that says this is our time. Mm. Right. Sometimes you find that so they do, don't want you, to talk. Should you should you create then the environment? For the child to want to share with you. Thank you. Because sometimes mm -hmm. the child don't even know them to say anything. Should you, as the parent, open up that discussion? Yes. And say, is there anything you want to say? Or mm -hmm. should you do that? Yes. Go to the child, open the discussion, mm -hmm. right? Um, focus on open ended questions because what you might get is, yeah, I'm fine. Nothing is wrong. Mm -hmm. But state exactly the the behavior that you see has changed be specific i'm concerned that you're sleeping all day mm -hmm. is there something that you want to talk to me about mm -hmm. i observe that you're not eating as you would normally eat what's going on mm -hmm. start a conversation and if the child really don't want to talk to you because sometimes they are protective of you too mm -hmm. don't take it personal provide options do you want to talk with somebody else? Yeah. Do you want me to get someone for you to talk to? Or do you want to choose someone you want to talk to? If you don't like it, it's fine. We can change and find somebody else that you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. My God, you are spoken at the wheel, Camille. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, as adults, we create that depression in our children, and I'll tell you why. We are struggling. Um, might be single parents, might be somebody... But with the person that we share the struggles and the traumas with the most mm -hmm. is the child. Yes. So we will say, so to the child, my, my parent is going through all of this because of me. Mm. May I work so hard because I want to make sure I say, you get a good education. Mm -hmm. the, the people in my workplace, you know, they do me, whatever, but it's all right. Come here, may I get the money, but come here, I send you. Do we, do we share too much with our children sometimes? Yes, we do. And this is where some of the suicidal thoughts come in. Uh. Okay, so this is now where the child says, um, it's better if I'm not here, mm. mommy would be better off without me. Mm. And these are some of the things you'll hear. Mm. So this is now saying the child is, too, is exposed to too much mm -hmm. of what is going on, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes as you said, parents need to find an outlet outside right. of the child. Right. I feel as much as you mm. want, to, you should set the example as much as you want the child to open up and talk. Right. You have to find somebody and talk to as well. Exactly. Because when you're frustrated, and you're not even aware, you know, you're just a complaint. And maybe you complain about the wicked people in my work, but you work with them, so you're all right, you know, if you deal with them, the child does not. And sometimes it's parents, you know. The your father is, is your father, your father, your father. And then when the child sees the father, the child doesn't know. And them father, when they love, but they can't go hug them father, can't make a go home with mommy now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to betray mom. We mm -hmm. put them sometimes in the middle of too much. Yes, we do. And that is coming from our default response. Uh. So, because we grow up a certain way, yeah. accustomed to hearing certain things, accustomed to a particular structure. Mm -hmm. And so we bring that 
Correct. kind of behavior Correct. into our own home yeah. and so we discuss these things openly because that's what we are accustomed to mm -hmm. so that's the default response but unawarely not knowing that this is really impacting the child mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So I think sometimes we need to be aware of our own default response, how we respond to situations, mm -hmm. how we respond to our children, the kind of conversations we have. Yeah. Because until we become aware of these things, then th that's when we can change them and practice mm -hmm. because we have to practice. Mm -hmm a different response because when these default this is a default response it becomes a part of you so it's like unlearning and relearning correct correct i think it's also important that we see our teens as individuals so miss mary son is not your son miss mary daughter is not your daughter the mm -hmm. fact that miss mary's son can take 13 subjects and go play football basketball volleyball and still sing on the church choir that's <laughs> all theme business you know, when you say to your child who's struggling mm -hmm. to do five subjects, why you can't do all of these things? That's, that's, that's very judgmental. And I think that's another problem that we have. Comparison and expectations. Yeah. yeah. Right? So you compare the child with not even with mere son in there, compare the child even with their own other siblings who has different capabilities, different personality. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so when you compare that child, that contributes to the low self-esteem too. Right, which throws the child into depression because they feel like they're not good enough mm -hmm. and they start to compare themselves because they're, they're not good as John and they're not good as Jane mm -hmm. and so this throws them into a feeling of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. They are not good enough and they'll never be good enough. Yeah. So getting them to open up, talk to them, create an environment where mm -hmm. they feel secure but I feel consistency is important as well because I feel like teens, because so much is happening with them, um, well depression to me is a, is a continuum right so i feel like you know you can address one thing mm -hmm. but don't leave them don't leave them leave that environment open consistently not because you see them eating now mm -hmm. and, and and hanging out because teen, teens teens can be creative you know yes. them realize that okay to me not eat i'm going to see me asleep <laughs> them no semi depressed i'm going to eat the food even though i don't want it so i think you have to keep those channels open all the time consistency consistent parental support yeah right and you you'll realize that um a home with consistent parental support has um their children has high resilience yeah right they're more confident mm. because they feel secure at home mm -hmm. the security is there mm -hmm. right but what uh, if i'm a teen watching now camille and for, for, no disrespect but for my parents them is just not that parent where do i go where do i go the child can have this conversation with the parent too mm -hmm. to say okay um whilst the parent has because they're very expressive and open you know me know but if, yeah, me, if me go to my mother she's gonna lick me down so I'm going to lock up in my room. What, 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 what structures are there in society to help mm -hmm. them? Is it the guidance counselor in school? Do, do they come to you? Do they go to church? Where do they go? Okay, so they have a guidance counselor in the schools. Mm -hmm. um, and if the guidance counselors are not able to manage whatever is happening, they do have referrals, persons that they will send them to. So the schools sometimes write referrals to say to the parents to say, okay, um, the child needs to go here because this is happening. Okay. Right. So they'll call the parents in if they're not able to handle it. But as far as I'm concerned right now, the guidance counselors would have been the first contact for them in schools okay. and then they'll take it from there. Okay. So 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 go to the guidance Go counselor. to the guidance counselor. Yeah, go to the guidance counselor. I <laughs> we have us me tell you silence is one of the biggest things that affect mental wellness now because mm -hmm. I feel like the children um sometimes go to the guidance counselors and them say does nobody say nothing to my mother or father because you know, they're not going to respond well. So that's another thing. They're, they're fair of sharing mm -hmm. because of uh, what they think might be the judgment that they're going to receive from it or the punishment. Okay, so this is where the guidance counselor now has to step in for the child to feel comfortable. This is now the role of the guidance counselor mm -hmm. for the child to feel secure, mm -hmm. to know that, okay, this is important. Yeah. Because if this is not dealt with daily, this depression is just a it's continuum mm -hmm. so you can move from mild to severe yeah yeah right yeah. and so the guidance counselor have a role to protect mm -hmm. but in order to protect then you have to allow the child to feel secure and safe you know because if the child doesn't feel safe then they'll continue to say no mm -hmm. but so they have to create that environment 
for the child to feel safe enough. What's the role of the teacher? Because right. if I'm a teacher and I have a child who is a top performing child, mm -hmm. and then I realize that the grades are going down, mm -hmm. um, do I, do, does that signal something to me? To right. say, not just the parent. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't just bring it to the attention of the parent. I should maybe say to the guidance counselor as well that something is affecting John's academic performance. Check on it for me, please. Right. So, yes, that's the role of the teacher. Yeah. To first meet the guidance counselor because the guidance counselor would have been the first contact mm -hmm. because then they would have assessed what is going on right. from there right. and then they would have made a decision from there. Mm -hmm. So, based on what would have been revealed to the guidance counselor, the guidance counselor now has the role to take action. Yeah, kind of the bridge. bridge right. The job. All right, Camille, I know you, you specialize in, in, you do a lot of other types of counseling, but you specialize in this as well. So mm -hmm. if I am a, a, a parent, a, a caregiver, um, just, just someone who has concern for a child in my community, mm -hmm. what do I do? Okay, so if you do have a concern for the child in the community, and I've seen it happen before, I mean, because the truth is, I, person in the community cannot necessarily take a child to get help All right. right without the the parents, parents. approval mm -hmm. so the first contact would have been ha is to have a conversation with the parent and the truth is it is how you have the conversation because there's so much stigma and they feel like something is wrong with the child mm -hmm. it is how you present the situation mm -hmm. right so you don't have to present the situation like, okay, something is wrong with your child. So you can put your mouth on my picnic for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but to say, okay, um, it is best to have an avenue where the child can feel free to express him or herself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this, these are the options. Yeah. You know what I like to do when I'm in situations like that? Maybe because I'm a storyteller, I find something anecdotal to mm -hmm. say. And I'll say, you know, say, um, Jane Brown, I have a daughter. And, and she tell me, said the girl asleep like, a lot and she not do whatever to affect her schoolwork. And them say a depression, you know, you know, warm, warm to Sophia. You see that happening with her? Because I find that if you, if you, if you kind of just ease it in, in. by using another not example, a, mm -hmm. them not feel like you attack them or judge them. Right. You know, and yeah. I feel that's the only way. But, but it's so much. It is a lot. It is so much. It is. It is a whole whole lot because we don't even touch the sexuality issue yet which is also an issue because my mother come from a christian home and a christian background i'm struggling with my sexuality who am i gonna tell my mother that mm. <laughs> right oh, Jesus. so the parental support not there so that throws you into deep depression because guess what i don't know i mean this is my path and this is the road i want to take <laughs> yeah. Mommy and daddy is from a Christian environment. How and is that? How and is that going to work? Mm -hmm. So like, this is not going to happen in my home. Yes. And even and even the way they explore their sex, the, you know, their, their reproductive health too. Mm -hmm. I want don't bring this argument. No birds and bees argument, argument. in this house. Exactly. Right. So it's they feel like they leap. don't have, and that contributes to the cutting and the whole. Because guess what? Definitely, I can't tell my parents this. Yeah. Right? Can't tell them, so I'm, I'm curious about this. I'm curious about or I this. Want to, mm, right. No, oh, geez. Right? All right, Camille. It's a whole lot. It's a lot. To unpack, it's a lot. But at least we unpacked some of it. <laughs> right. And, I, and I, one of the things I want um, our teenagers to take away from it and our parents to take away from it is that it requires conversation like this. Find someone that you can talk to, mm -hmm. that you can express your concerns, your challenges. And, and let them guide you in the right. best way possible that you can support your teenager and teenagers reach out to someone that can help you navigate where you are in your journey for folks who want to find you how do they do that caribbean thoughts to teens yes, <laughs> right. yes. caribbean thoughts to teens. right and and can i say um Delio, one of the most important things is validation yeah it is important because i've heard it so much they don't understand mm -hmm. teen want to be heard they want to be validated not to hear what you got through and that it never happened to you i never impacted this way and a whole lecture they don't want to hear the lecture mm -hmm. all they want you to do is to understand that this is how i'm feeling yeah that is important great way to wrap this up thank you so much camille campbell for speaking with us guys Wow. Thank you for having Another me. episode of Halfway <laughs> Full, focusing on our teens. Um, a lot of our teens are going through a lot of mental wellness challenges. 
give them the kind of support so they feel they can talk about it they can address it and then we can have a halfway full society see you on another episode Thank you.